Good day, this will be the English sermon of how to treat elderly people. The Bible teaches a lot about how to treat elderly people, so I'm going to be scratching only the surface. Turn in your Bibles to Genesis and chapter 42 and verse 37. We're going to learn about Jacob. 42 and verse 37. And Reuben spake unto his father, saying, Slay my two sons, if I bring him not to thee. Deliver him into my hand, and I will bring him to thee again. So this is about Reuben's younger brother that is held captive in Egypt. And Jacob does not want to let Benjamin go so that they can free the other son. Reuben says, he will sacrifice his two younger children for the sake of his one brother. And Jacob, understanding the heart of Reuben, sees that Reuben is making a very rash statement. And Jacob, having seen many bad things throughout his life, he doesn't re react to that as a young person. He reacts to that like a mature person with experience. He says, and he said, my son shall not go down with you, talking about Reuben, for his brother is dead, talking about Joseph, and he is left alone. If mischief befall him by the way in the which ye go, then shall ye bring down my grey ha hairs with sorrow to the grave. So because of Jacob's experiences, he answers a certain answer. Usually it's because of wisdom that older people gives an answer like that. You need to understand that they can become quite depressed, an elderly per person, not because of simple things, but because it's a lot of things throughout their life that are coming together and cause one big sad thing. Jacob loved Rachel very much. If you didn't know that part of the story, you wouldn't understand why he's upset about Benjamin probably having to leave. Treat older people with understanding. They don't always um, act rash like you would. They will take a time to trust you before they will allow you to do something. So don't expect an older person to trust you right away. Let's turn to Ruth chapter 1 and verse 16. Ruth chapter 1 and verse 16 up to verse 21. And Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave thee, or to return from following after thee. For whither thou goest, I will go, and where thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people, and thy God my God. And here you see again, Ruth saying something very strong and saying something very zealous. The older person, they don't always have control over whether um, young people are going to do something very zealous. So you will see that Naomi reacts in that way. Ruth continues in verse 17, Where thou diest will I die, and there will I be buried. The Lord do so to me, and more also, if aught but death part thee and me. When she saw this is Naomi. When she saw that she was steadfastly minded to go with her, she left speaking unto her. So, because older people will be able to predict when younger people are not going to listen, they keep silence. Their silence usually says a lot. So, when an old person becomes silent, try to read the silence. Don't simply think they're not willing to speak. They're saying something with their silence also. Verse 19. So they too went until they came to Bethlehem, and it came to pass, when they were come to Bethlehem, that all the city was moved about them. And they said, Is this Naomi? And she said unto them, Call me not Naomi, because Naomi means sweet. Call me Mara, meaning bitter. For the Almighty hath dealt very bitterly with me. I went out full, and the Lord hath brought me home again empty. Why then call ye me Naomi, seeing the Lord 
hath testified against me, and the Almighty hath afflicted me. So Naomi returned, and Ruth the Moabites, her daughter-in-law, with her, which returned out of the country of Moab, and they came to Bethlehem in the beginning of barley harvest. So Naomi tells the people, do not call me Naomi. She did not want to be identified with sweetness. And another interesting thing about older people, sometimes their tastes aren't that good anymore. So they can't always taste sweet things. Uh, you will see another older person later in the Bible talk to David and tell him, why do you want to give me such rich food? Um, I won't necessarily be able to taste it. Their life is a different kind of life. At the moment, they just seek to be at peace and that they will die in peace. That's why Jacob did not want to go to the grave with his gray hair. Keep that in consideration. You don't know what has happened in this person's life. Like Naomi, something terrible could have happened to the person and it could be an extremely sad th thing. And you will just have to have the patience and maybe ask the person what happened and that person will probably tell you. And you will probably have to take some time to listen to what the person told you, but God will bless you for the time you spend with the older person. Why would God be a shallow rewarder of those who serve Him? So serve God in serving older people. Turn to Proverbs chapter 20 and verse 29. Proverbs chapter 20 and verse 29. The glory of young men is their strength, and the beauty of old men is the gray head. The glory of young men is their strength. And you saw that with Ruth and with Reuben. They wanted to do something very zealous. They wanted to do something with a lot of strength. And that was not the reaction of the older people. They reacted more in a sense of wisdom and they replied in out of their experience. You will see that to be something beautiful about older people. They have so much experience that the way they answer things makes a difference and you learn about the beauty of um, mature people from them. Learning about that beauty, you can adopt more of that beauty in your life also. So obviously this is more than just about the color of the hair. Don't regard the elderly appearance of the elderly person as a bad thing about the person. Rather see the elderly appearance of the elderly person as a glory, a beautiful thing of the elderly person. When you see any older person walking through the street, just think to yourself, wow, what a beautiful old person. Um, I can learn so much about that person over there. Don't be like ignorant and foolish young children who see older people and think to themselves, this older person is somebody that I will not be able to identify with and they will make my life boring and give me a lot of instructions that I don't want to do. Don't react like that. Rather serve, enjoy and cherish older people. They are a beautiful thing and the Bible describes them as beautiful in the book of wisdom. So this is about wisdom. You don't have the knowledge and things having happened in your life yet, they have seen much more than you have. Learn from them. Don't think you're all that. Now let's turn to Proverbs 31 and verse 23. Proverbs 31 and verse 23. Her husband is known in the gates when he sitteth among the elders of the land. So why is her husband among the elders because she makes sure that um, he is respected. So the elders of the land over there are respected people. 
the land chose to respect the elders and this was something of Jewish culture and it should be something of each and every culture in the world. Elders should be respected, older people should be respected in every community because the older people have a lot of wisdom about things that happen gradually over time and when you need to make decisions of how your community is going to be run they should be ones to have an input their word should matter a lot you don't just do something in your community um, set up some kind of rule before you consult your elders they've been here throughout the time don't think because we are living in a new era or because we have a democracy now or we have some kind of um, institution running business at the moment that they will know nothing about what's going to happen because of certain decisions. Elders should be appreciated within decisions being made within a community. Communities should appreciate it when the elders want to be involved because sometimes they don't even have the strength to be involved. They should encourage the elders to speak up about important issues. And finally, let's turn to 1 Timothy 5 and verse 1. 1 Timothy 5 and verse 1. Rebuke not an elder, but entreat him as a father, and younger men as brethren. So, you're going to be treating older people as fathers or as mothers, as we see in the next verse. The next verse says, the elder women as mothers, the younger as sisters with all purity. You approach an older person with wisdom. You know that that older person is like a father of your father. And so you treat that person with double respect. Yes, it makes a lot of sense that you should address it when they say things that are wrong. But that does not mean that you should disregard what the Bible says about how you should treat older people. You should still understand that that person has had more life than you and that that person does have a certain say. Just because he says something that's completely wrong doesn't mean that you can act like you're the person's age. So when you treat older people, be kind, especially if they've done nothing wrong. When you treat older people with respect, then you will have a lot of wisdom. Treat them like a father. Open the door for them if you're taking them somewhere in the car. Say please, say thank you, and make them know that you are willing to serve them in any measure of length. Obviously, I know there's other people that uh, frequently serve older people. It might be your older mother or you might have this as a job to take care of older people and this sermon isn't really um, for that kind of person. This sermon is more for young people who do not work with old people generally. Young people that don't work with old people generally sometimes do not have this wisdom that they should treat elderly people in a certain way. So if you're still a young person I would admonish you to read the Bible, learn how to treat older people in the right way because it's actually very sad and a very disturbing thing when you see young people mistreat older people because they think the older people are going to overpower their lives or make lives uncomfortable for them and they come from a century that has things that the younger generation don't want to identify with but don't think like that appreciate older people work with older people and if you're if you don't usually work with older people and there's an older person treat that older person very well and the love of God will show you what to do let the Holy Spirit lead you it's so important you will hear the Holy Spirit tell you to treat the older person well in Jesus' precious name, Amen.